So uh, uh, we have a, a talk this morning uh, on the world's most dangerous, well, I think the world's most dangerous file format, <laughs> uh, which uh, uh, I'm sure you all know and love, uh, perfect for spear phishing. Uh, so uh, I give you Julia, Julia Wolf and uh, PDF. Oh my God. Oh. All right, so I'm, I'm Julia, like you said. Uh, I work at FireEye and I do malware analysis and whatever else needs to be analyzed, basically, research. Um, so uh, this is my first time speaking at CCC, and I'm amazed this many people are awake at 11 in the morning. But uh, so how many of you here have ever, or how many of you have not heard of, the, of PDF? OK, good. <laughs> um, so how many of you know that you can play a QuickTime movie or render 3D animation inside of a PDF document. OK, that's pretty good. Uh, so I'm going go, to cover a few of the features, uh, or a somewhat slightly not quite exhaustive list of uh, features uh, that are in, in, uh, in the PDF for, um, spec, and, uh, and a couple other interesting things about it, too. This is the basic outline following. So. Um, ICAVET was written back mostly back in the 90s. Uh, it's about, f about 15 million lines of code. Uh, and to put that in perspective, uh, Firefox is about 2.7 million lines of code. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure the 15 million includes like Flash and QuickTime or something, I don't know. But it's, it's got a lot of stuff built into it. Um, so uh, PDF was, was sort of a reaction to PostScript. Uh, there's a couple of problems with, with PostScript. Uh, it's, it's basically fourth with a bunch of graphics operators. So in order to uh, display page 100, you had to execute the code from pages 1 through 99 first. Uh, and it could take forever, because it's actually a fully Turing language. It, you know, it may ray trace a, a sphere on a checkerboard or something while you're uh, somewhere between pages 1 and 100. So uh, what PDF uh, is is basically just a bunch of objects uh, connected together in a kind of a tree. Um, it's, uh, it looks kind of like this. Uh, you can write it, it's all basically 7-bit uh, ASCII, although it's 8-bit clean. Um, and uh, this is an object, it says it's a page, and it's this big. Uh, this is an action, it's a JavaScript action, like it says, and that's the JavaScript that gets run. So it's, it's actually pretty easy to read. Um, the, uh, one of the things is, is uh, the philosophy behind PDF changed a bit, Shif has been shifting over the years also, and, and Acrobat has, uh, I mean, Adobe is, um, is also sort of, of, of uh, conceptually re recast PDF as being a container format uh, that is sort of an archive that you can put a bunch of other files into, and they get the exact same files back out again sometimes later. Uh, so remember that. <laughs> um, the, uh, Adobe submitted the, uh, the PDF 1.7 spec to the ISO f to make it an official standard. It's uh, ISO 32000-1, 2008 is the current revision. And like right at the beginning, uh, I mean, the, the, the reason I did this talk was I, like sometime last year, I actually sat down and read through the entire spec. And the entire time, I was like, oh my god, what were they thinking? Um, and and I, I told uh, FX, it's like, oh, I want to give a talk at PH Neutral. And he's like, uh, okay. And so I had to come up with something. So I talked about this. Uh, at the very, like right at the very beginning of the, of the, uh, the spec, it says that there's nothing in this document for validating the, the conformance of a PDF file or a reader to the spec. Uh, and that's, 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 that's extremely true because there is in fact, for many PDF files, there is in fact no way to know what the correct interpretation of the file is. So the, um, oops, so quick list of features. This is actually all in the ISO spec. It, it, it enumerates this stuff. So you can do OpenGL, uh, and, and you can have uh, like JavaScript events attached to various actions on the, on the 3D objects and so forth. Uh, there's a, a database connector, it's like ODBC. Uh, and there's a funny thing in the spec about that too. It says that, uh, that there's no security for any of the databases uh, that, that the user has access to. It's up to the database administrator to keep all their data secure because uh, PDF can just, has access to all the databases that the user reading the PDF has access to, apparently. So um, you, can embed, uh, the, you can embed a flash file, run it, uh, play sound and video. There's a, there's a full-blown um, XML form 
Turing-based uh, thing that, that does, uh, it has like a, its own macro language called form, cl form calc, which is another Turing complete language included in P PostScript, I mean PDF. Uh, it, it generates barcodes. Uh, you can do uh, RSA public key signing of the data and so forth. Um, there's, a, there's also this, I, was, I saw, bought this like the day before yesterday. Uh, one of the special barcodes types is an RFID type, and it's, it's not nearly as exciting as it sounds. It's, there's apparently certain printers that, instead of printing a, a barcode or something, will, will print the information to an RFID tag. But there's an actual data type defined for it. Um, so JavaScript, there's, there's uh, JavaScript now in PDF. Uh, it, um, it, it has a full XML RPC library. Uh, you can... Uh, JavaScript running, when uh, the PDFs running have a browser, it can send events back up to the JavaScript. The JavaScript in a PDF can send events back up to JavaScript running in the browser, and vice versa. Um, there's, uh, you can do a little bit of writing to disk. Older versions, uh, it w it's, it's much more restricted now, uh, but like in old, old versions of Acrobat, you could like read and write to any file on disk. Uh, there's a uh, globally persistent, hang on, my, the microphone's falling off. Uh, there's a uh, global persistent data. Um, it's uh, I, the um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who's doing EverCookie. I, I mentioned this to him also because it's it's one of the many other places you can store persistent data. Uh, these these are a bit more restricted now. Uh, this one has like a local origin restriction on it or something like that. So um, there's a uh, uh, Adobe has some sort of uh, search index thing that the the PDF interfaces with. There's there's DRM. Uh, of course, and uh, you can um, uh, you know attach arbitrary files, uh, have a, a and have a PDF that renders completely differently depending on whether you're viewing it on a screen, on a printer or a printout or in a slideshow mode. And uh, there's a uh, so. So last time when I was reading through the, uh, the, the spec, about 400 pages in, uh, I came across this. And uh, here I'll, I'll uh, highlight it a bit. It's, it basically says that if you, uh, there's this particular action type that if you, if you pass the name of a, of a file uh, or a program basically, it will execute it with the arbitrary command and ar arguments that you give it. And I, I was reading this and I'm like, like, like they, they, they couldn't have done that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, somebody would have noticed uh, that, you know, blindly executing an arbitrary program with arbitrary arguments, uh, you know, might not be a good thing. Uh, but it turns out, so, like, if you actually put, like, a command.exe in the, there, would it run? And actually, uh, yes, actually, it would. Uh, it, let me see if I pronounce his name right. Uh, DJ Stevens. Um, Made, you know, publicized this back in spring, and, and Adobe has sort of fixed it. Uh, they, they put up a big message box, box now saying, warning, do you really want to run command.exe? Oh, yes or no, Bef before it does this now. But uh, the funny thing is that, that uh, there were at least two PDF readers that did this. So no, there had to be at least two people who read the spec and thought this was a good enough idea to implement it in their PDF reader without realizing what this meant. So, let's see. Uh, in older versions, like 1.5, uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff you could do through, from the JavaScript that's, that's a bit more restricted now, quite restricted. Uh, add remove menu items uh, from the program and toolbar, toolbar icons, uh, send click events to them so you could like add a menu item and click on it. Uh, read and write files on disk, make arbitrary network connections, you know, send email. Uh, call JavaScript and other documents. Uh, it's interesting, you can actually, uh, the code to do it looks kind of like this. You can either read it off the local system or off a URL and then just call some function that's defined in, in some JavaScript blob inside of one of those. So um, there's, uh, in current versions, there's a privileged context in which this stuff works. And it's, uh, it's a little bit, there's not very much information in the spec about it. There's apparently some sort of uh, X509 certificate uh, authority uh, that, has apparently some keys somewhere, I don't know, uh, that are trusted to sign PDFs. And if a PDF is signed w with one of these keys, then you get to do all that stuff again. Or if it's also running locally, or also you can just go into the preferences and turn off the uh, restrictions on it also, which is how I did a bit of the testing on this. The, uh, the syntax, like I was saying, it's all 7-bit ASCII. It's pretty, uh, you can actually sit down and write a PDF file with a text editor. 
Um, it's got Boolean types, number types. Uh, strings are bounded by parentheses. Hex strings are, uh, they've got greater than, less than signs. Um, and if it's a, an odd number, they did actually specify in the, in the, uh, in the standard, if it's an odd number of uh, characters in the hex string, then the last one is a zero. So uh, names are, start with a slash, and arrays are uh, inside of square brackets. Uh, dictionaries are just associative arrays, so uh, foo is, is equal to one, two, three, and bar is equal to true. And uh, streams are kind of like giant strings. Uh, it's, it's basically when you include like a, uh, a big graphics image or, or a font or whatever. Uh, it's a lot easier to do this instead of you know, escaping parentheses or whatever. Uh, there's a null object, although anything that doesn't exist is, is automatically a null. Um, and then uh, objects. Uh, where you can just take any of this stuff and stick it between that, and then you can use it, uh, make references to it with the R operator. And so if you have a, uh, an object that's a string like hello world here, and then you make a reference to it here, so example is equal to hello world, uh, it's equivalent syntactically to just putting the original data uh, in that spot. So um, the thing is that it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't uh, do it at parse time, so uh, if, you, if you define that object to be like oops, 12, that doesn't actually substitute. Similarly, uh, this doesn't work because uh, these don't really exist at parse time, but if you do it this way, then it does. Um, and uh, anyway, so I, I suspect it's, it's, I haven't actually like reversed the actual parser or anything. I'm just like feeding it uh, PDFs. But uh, anyway, I suspect it, it does the evaluation when it actually goes to use the object. Uh, and it, which is probably a good thing, because if they, if they hadn't, they would have accidentally reinvented Lisp. Um, and I don't know, actually, I haven't actually tested other PDF readers to see if there are any readers that actually do the, uh, ev the reference evaluation at parse time. If that's the case, then you could actually, then they are Turing complete. But, uh, anyway, oh, streams. There's also uh, a lot of um, uh, ways of encoding a stream. Uh, was the, the other advantage of a stream, besides from being a giant string, is you can compress it. Uh, and you can compress it one of a 16 different ways, all simultaneously in any order you want. Uh, in the, and there's also an encryption thing. And there's apparently, uh, in older versions, uh, possibly still in current ones, if you uh, RC4 uh, encrypt a stream with a, with a null password, Acrobat's smart enough to figure out that uh, it was a null password, and it'll silently decrypt it without prompting the user or anything. So uh, there's a lot of things like that in Acrobat. Um, strings, names. Uh, yeah, you can, you can put in uh, various uh, hex uh, escaping with the uh, pound sign in names. Uh, C style backslashes work. Uh, there's, uh, so Metasploit uses a bunch of these tricks uh, when uh, generating PDFs, because um, uh, GA like, wrote a blog post about it two years ago or something, so everyone does this now. Um, graphics, so the graphics operators are also completely another, completely different language. Uh, of their own also, and they generally they follow the format of having an opening, opening and closing tags and where you kind of shift into a particular state, like, oh, this is the text rendering state, uh, and then a bunch of uh, operators, and the operators are basically kind of fourth style where you've, uh, you know, postfix or whatever. Um, looks kind of like that. Anyway, I haven't spent a lot of time uh, digging into that JavaScript. So JavaScript, uh, all of the metadata in the document is both readable and writable from JavaScript, writable. Um, some of it, uh, actually, some of the metadata is read only in reader. Uh, you need like the publisher or whatever to uh, modify some of it. But um, there's a lot of places to hide data in a PDF. If you're say going to obfuscate your your PDF, uh, you can you know stick part of it in an icon or in the legal warnings uh, or or the links or whatever. This, this has to do with like the DRM stuff um, and so so forth. Some of this is kind of metadata that's you figure out when you actually render the thing, like the number of words on a page. Um, some of these, actually, if you're, if you're using these for obfuscation, uh, the, uh, and you're trying to figure out what the answer, what the output of this function is, if you're, if you're not at running this thing in Acrobat, uh, some of these can be a little bit difficult because uh, things like this function return the coordinates of the bounding box for a particular word on the page, on a particular page. 
And so you'd need to uh, actually graphically render the page just as Acrobat would to find out what the answer to this uh, is. Uh, there's a bunch of meta intrinsic metadata about the file. You can also check also file size, file name, and so forth. So if, if people are manually trying to analyze it and they, they muck around with it, it whatever. Nobody, uh, I've only ever seen this done in like uh, hacking competitions or contests or whatever. Um, so I ripped, took the st slide straight from Sebastian Porst's uh, slide deck because he gave a talk similar to this a few months ago. He did a PDF dissector. Uh, there was also a funny thing about the, the uh, uh, JavaScript engine in Acrobat is that it, uh, it, there's some slight differences in just in the language itself from how, how it behaves in uh, a web browser. Um, he uses this as an example. And uh, what is this is that if you define a global variable as, say, like a, a particular type and then reassign this to a different type later, in most in web browsers, it, it's a new type. But in, in Acrobat, for some reason, it re retains the original type and doesn't change. He's, he speculates this is because it uses C++ for the backing storage or whatever in, uh, on the JavaScript engine. But uh, so like if you, if you, um, you know, assign, make this variable a Boolean uh, and then assign it a string, web browser says, oh, it's a string. If you, if you do the th same thing with uh, uh, in, in Adobe Acrobat, um, it, it ends up remaining a Boolean instead of turning into a string. So if you're using like um, uh, CMonkey or, or one of those engines, uh, you need to be aware of this because uh, CMonkey does it that way. Um, some malware is starting to use a few of these tricks, not very many. Uh, and uh, that's weird. Uh, Neosploit, it, uh, it, it just essentially picks a bunch of me metadata off of a bunch of uh, annotation objects. Or annotations are like uh, sticky notes you stick on, uh, on the page. Um, and, and the, uh, the early ones, they would just look, pick up the uh, subject field. Uh, some later ones use author. The newer ones are doing something completely, completely different from this, and I haven't updated these slides yet. But uh, the uh, crime, crime pack similarly actually does a, uh, actually involves like a little bit more uh, uh, computation or something if you're, if you're figuring this out in that it, it gets a particular, it get, picks uh, words off of the fourth page. And uh, so you need to know what words are on what page in order to uh, essentially run through this loop, uh, which is the uh, decryption routine. It, it, whatever comes out of this gets evaluated. So it's uh, a lot of those. There's um, most of the targeted attacks I've, I've looked at so far. Uh, they uh, also do the, uh, the same metadata tricks, um, either, either f out of the, uh, the annotations or there's actually a meta metadata for the document itself, which is the, uh, this info object. Um, there's also, I don't know, there's some tool, I, I suspect it's Chinese, that's, that's uh, making a lot of these, and it, it's uh, not producing well-formed PDFs, I noticed, because it, it looks like it took a regular file and like tore out one of the objects, but like left everything in place, and then like wrote nulls or spaces over it, and then wrote an exe on top of it, but then when you, when the malware author like updates their code, then it writes a new copy on top, and if it's shorter, then the end of the previous exe is on there and stuff. There's, I know, it's, uh, it's something I, I haven't, uh, I need to look into when I have some more time, but. Um, so the other thing, since uh, PDF is a container format, uh, all of the vulnerabilities that, uh, that appear in like QuickTime or Flash or whatever are also accessible via a PDF vector. And the, uh, uh, the uh, Flash uh, ActionScript Virtual Machine 2 vulnerability from last summer uh, is a perfect example of this because the initial attacks, uh, people thought it was a PDF uh, O'Day, but it was, it was actually a Flash one because the initial attacks were delivered via a PDF included in an uh, email message. Uh, similarly, um, this is from earlier this year. There was a uh, there was a four-year-old vulnerability in Lib LibTIF, which uh, apparently Acrobat had been using, but it had been keeping up to date. So uh, the vulnerability was still present in in uh, in Acrobat up in, up until uh, like this summer. And um, anyway, so basically, you would just you know stick a, a uh, TIFF in the PDF and hit this particular block of code. Anyway. One sec. So when you read through the, 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 the spec specification for, for the uh, PDF file format, uh, 
which you, which you, which you really pay attention to is what it doesn't say. Um, for example, the, uh, the strings, I mean the streams. Uh, well, rather, there's, there's usually two common ways of representing string data. You either have a uh, beginning symbol, and then a bunch of stream of symbols and an end ending symbol, and if you know where the beginning is, you can leave the first one off. Or you have a, a count, symbol, count of symbols, and a bunch of symbols, and that's Pascal style versus like C style. Um, so uh, PDF streams use both simultaneously. And if they don't agree, there's nothing in the spec as to which one you should trust, or which, which one wins. So if you write something like this, this is how it usually looks. There's a, a length that says there's 50 bytes in here, which there is. Uh, and this is the beginning of it, and that's the end of it. But, uh, ta -da. but um, if you, if you mod in the case of Acrobat, if you change the length, uh, then it still reads this just fine. So it's, it's basically going, looking at the, uh, the stream and end streams for that, uh, particularly if it's missing. And uh, you actually don't actually need the end stream there either, because this is also a terminating symbol for the object. And so you can leave that out too, and uh, this is also perfectly fine and works um, just, just well. Anyway, uh, there's also no way of escaping the end stream if it appears inside of a stream. Uh, there's like, for example, where does this stream actually end, and what is inside of it? <laughs> um, it's, the answer is not that simple, because uh, if you say there's uh, 40 bytes in this stream, uh, 40 bytes is the line feed right there, uh, then essentially this is what's inside the, the stream. Uh, okay. If you, uh, and, and you can, it doesn't actually matter what it is, you can even have end stream in there. If you, um, have the length being something wrong, so it's like pointing down off past the end of the object, uh, then it stops the first end stream token, and these don't count, they're ignored. If you uh, leave that out entirely, then, uh, then this is a null object, basically. Although, strangely enough, if you explicitly put null there, then, uh, then it stops the first end stream again. Um, the, the other interesting thing is that the, uh, the length may or may not include the final line feed. There's supposed to be a line feed before the, uh, before the end stream, but if you, uh, if you point at the line feed instead of at the beginning of the end stream, that's okay. These are both equivalent. Um, like, and uh, if it's, because it's basically looking for, whoops, it seems to be looking for either one, being one or two bytes away from an end stream, because uh, if, you, if you end up more than that, uh, then, it, then it goes back to, to falling back to the, using that as the end of the stream. But, uh, oops. Um, although, if you, the other thing is, though, if, if you set up the uh, cross-reference table correctly so, so that PDF can still figure out where the objects are normally, uh, you can also just say that the length is, uh, oh, all the rest of the file. And it'll, it'll happily slurp the entire rest of the raw data in the file up into the object, or however much you want. And uh, while you can still, and simultaneously, you can still use the objects inside of it because it, it's, uh, it's uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> so uh, th so um, th this morning I was actually writing, uh, I believe it's actually possible to write a PDF quine doing this trick. Um, and I was, I was working on this mo one this morning. I'll show you how I think it'll go, but I, I didn't have time to finish it before my talk right now. Um, so uh, other things, there's uh, some, ver some stuff's kind of versioned a bit. Uh, you, could, you used to be able to use the old style PostScript type of uh, headers in the beginning. Uh, they, they dropped support for that a while ago, but if, you, if you're trying to target like an old version of, of PDF, you can use one of these. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, likewise. So uh, anything that's not defined is equivalent to the null object. And um, if any, uh, like, likewise, uh, none, of the, none of these are actually defined, so this is, this is uh, perfectly okay. Uh, also, anything that, any tokens that aren't recognized are ignored too, so uh, you can just put whatever you want, you know, in between the objects, uh, it's fine. The, uh, in the spec there's a, so at the end of the file, or at least the end of each revision, if you, if you add a new set of objects, there's, you write another one of these, but, there's a uh, cross-reference table that basically just gives you the offset into the file where the, each ob object begins. Uh, it looks kind of like this. It's a pretty 
straightforward. It uh, basically says uh, uh, there's no object zero, so that's what the F means. Uh, object one starts at uh, 10 bytes in, object two starts 98 bytes in, object three starts 147 bytes in, and so on and so forth. Um, spec says it's required. Uh, like I said, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, Acrobat doesn't actually care about these. If uh, these are completely bogus values, this, this is still perfectly fine. And uh, you can also just leave it out entirely, and it's still okay. Because um, uh, I guess uh, Acrobat's parser falls back to you know actually looking for the object tokens directly. Um, the uh, PDF header. Uh, is supposed to be at the beginning of the file, although it actually, it, it actually only needs to be within the first one kilobyte of the file. Um, and it doesn't actually need a number after it. So as long as that's somewhere in the first kilobyte, uh, this is perfectly OK. And it'll be recognized as a PDF by Acrobat. And also OS 10 Preview will as well. So, um, so you can stuff whatever you want in the first kilobyte, like a, a GIF or a JPEG or a ping or a zip file or Windows EXE. And, um, so I, I just did a quick example using uh, zip files. <laughs> um, there's uh, generally, whoops, there. Um, so usually there's a, uh, if we assume for a moment that the end of file token actually has to be the end of the file in a PDF, this is not actually true. But if it is, uh, you can basically split the PDF in half, so that the end really appears at the end, because the end of a zip file is, is 65k of arbitrary data. It's the zip file comment. So you can just stick this in the comment, and then put this, you know, just store this as one of the objects near the beginning, any, anywhere in the first kilobyte. Uh, and it should still be a, uh, a PDF. Uh, so generally, a uh, zip file looks like this. It's got a little uh, zip tree header, um, like the file name and stuff like that. Then the, then the uh, compressed data, although you can use no compression. And uh, then a central direct directory structure that basically says, oh, object uh, entry one starts at, uh, with, has this file name, and it starts at uh, offset zero or whatever, and then comments at the end. Uh, and when you actually do that, you end up getting this. Uh, this is a header. There's the PDF header. Uh, and there's the PDF file. And then there's the central directory structure. And there's the, the disk, end of disk thing that, uh, that basically points to the central directory structure, and then, then there's the, the, uh, the rest of the PDF there, all the way down to the end. So the end of file appears at the very end again. Um, the, the craft, if you just do it like this, the craft reference is simply wrong, but Acrobat doesn't care. Uh, you can change it if you want, but uh, the... Uh, so it actually, actually turns out you don't actually have to do this, because the, the end of file doesn't actually have to exist anywhere. Um, you, you can... Uh, put megs and megs after it. You can leave it out entirely and stuff. You can even put it at the beginning of the file. And so doing something like this is OK. <laughs> um, so you just store the, the PDF, and it's, it still, it still ends up being, uh, you just store it without compression, and the zip file ends up being a PDF file simultaneously. Um, and if you want to make analysis kind of annoying, uh, you can start putting pieces of the the PDF into the metadata in the zip file so that when you unzip the zip file, they disappear because they're not actually inside the file, the zip file, that is. So you can, uh, in this case, I, um, I just stuck the, the PDF header into the file name and then took, the, took it out of the actual file. So when you, um, uh, when you zip this up, the file name goes right before the, the rest of the compressed data. So when Acrobat sees this, it's like, oh, that's a PDF. And uh, but the uh, from uh, PK, uh, from Zip's point of view, this is, this is the actual beginning of the data. Um, so when you unzip it, it starts there, and that doesn't end up in the beginning of the file. Um, so uh, you can leave a bunch of stuff out. The uh, end object and end stream tokens. If if you got one or the other, it's okay. But if, if you leave them bo both out, then the parser does get really confused, and I haven't quite figured out precisely what the behavior is for that. Um, so doing something like this is okay. Um, and doing something like that, either that or that, but not both at the same time, because if you do that, then the objects start to merge together. And I haven't quite figured out what the behavior is, but uh, yeah, it does that, something like that. So uh, you can also leave out most of the objects, uh, or actually just all, all objects, references in general, just uh, have them explicitly uh, defined in place. Uh, you do need the, uh, 
or you can leave the catalog type off because it's obviously the catalog uh, because of how it's called. A bunch of the types you can actually leave out because they're, uh, they're kind of figured out from context and stuff. And all the sizes and lengths of all the streams are, you can also leave out because Acrobat will figure it out from the actual data it has in hand. So if you take all the stuff you don't need out of a PDF, this is uh, all you actually need to, say, run uh, JavaScript. Um, basically, there's the beginning of the file, there's the end of the file, and uh, it says there's a root object with uh, pages, uh, no pages, rather. Uh, you, have to have, you have to have the pages, but you can have zero pages. Uh, and then you just have an open action that runs the JavaScript. Ta-da! Uh, that's about 75 bytes or something. So uh, you can also, there's a, two optimizations people pointed out to me, is that if you, if you replace that with a null byte, uh, then you can actually shave off two bytes. And then if you also use the uh, on close action, you, it's a few bytes shorter than, than saying on open. Uh, although the thing is that it, um, because it's zero pages, uh, there's a funny thing, when you, when you open up a, when Acrobat opens a document with no pages in it, it, it kind of sits around doing nothing for a while, and then when a, an event actually gets sent to it, like you scroll on the page or something like that, it goes, oh, hey, wait a second, there's something wrong with this PDF document, and then it pops up an error. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you, uh, if, you, if you do the JavaScript at the uh, on open, it runs the JavaScript before that happens. If you do it on close, that happens before. And if the person just closes the uh, Acrobat instead of clicking OK, then the on close never gets run, but whatever. So it's, it's only like 20 bytes difference. Uh, anyway, but you can, you can stick the PDF in a lot of places. This is just in a, in a zip file, for example. But you could also stick it like in a GIF comment. Uh, so this is a well-formed GIF. It's also a well-formed PDF as far as Acrobat's concerned. And uh, Likewise, uh, th there's a, here's an HTML file. It's also a PDF document, same one. And, uh, and I actually had a ping example, too. If you go to the, uh, I didn't have time to stick it in here, uh, another slide, but they're, they're, if you go to the uh, CCC uh, talks wiki or something like that, there's a, I need to make a, um, a picture for the, uh, the talk. And so I, I did a picture of, of the, this thing, but I, I did it uh, as I put the, uh, all the PDF code in, the, in a text field in the, in the ping file. So the, the ping actually, up, if it hasn't been transformed or anything up on the, uh, on the wiki, is also one of these PDF files that will run some JavaScript. <laughs> so let's see what else. Uh, Oh yeah, you can you can find the object more than once. It's not really it doesn't quite explicitly say what what the behavior is in the in the spec. Although, since you can do like infinite revisions on all of the objects, but just by appending new ones to the end, this is that's pretty much the behavior that it follows. Although, it's, if you don't quite do it right, so I mean, uh, if you don't quite do it the way the spec does, it still works anyway. So uh, if you define object seven, you know, twice, uh, this this one is the one that actually runs. Uh, and even if you point your cross-reference table and say, that's really object seven, uh, it still runs that one. And if you even do an update, say, oh, this, this PDF was updated, and these are the new objects, and this is a new cross-reference table, and you point at that one there, it, it still runs, I mean, if you point that one there, then it still runs that one. So um, you can also, uh, you know, use, reference certain objects more than once, so you can make like a 100-page document with only one page in it. Um, this, this is useful if um, you're writing PDFs by hand and are really lazy and you don't want to write 100 page objects. You just use the same page over and over again. Um, the other thing in the, uh, in the spec, it's, it, it uh, very explicitly says that, uh, that a PDF, like uh, the page tree, is a, a uh, directed acyclic graph. Although it doesn't say what happens if, if, it is a, if there's a cycle in it or whatever. Um, and uh, I've been kind of, when I read that, I was kind of curious as to how many PDF parsers would uh, go into an infinite loop if you fed them uh, some objects like this. Because uh, each of these is, is, is every, each other one's parent or child object. And uh, Acrobat will throw an error when it, when it encounters this. But I haven't tested other PDF parsers to see if any of them will go into an infinite loop when you hand them that. Uh, ooh, demo time. So um, I was going to do some uh, slides explaining what's actually going on here, but I'll just have to show you. Uh, just a second. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. So I, uh, I did a, a, a three-way combination of I Hold on a second. There we go. Of Hold on a second. Of a, uh, I, took, I took the Windows Calculator program and I uh, stuck uh, a PDF inside of it 
and also I emitted a well from the zip file. So all f it's all three file types simultaneously. And uh, I mean, it's, you can't really say it's, it's this type or it's that type, because it, it's all of them. Uh, here, I can show you how, what the end sites look like. Um, basically, uh, it's, it's the Windows calculator program, but uh, there's a bit of space after the um, segment uh, table, so I, I stuck it, started in there because it's, it's within the first K. The, the text segment has to start on a, on a 4K page boundary or something like that, so there's, there's a, usually a bunch of empty space for, before the text segment. So I stuck that in there, and then I, I basically said, oh, the text segment, that's a, that's a stream object, so it's, it's perfectly okay <laughs> from uh, PDF. It's not just a bunch of white noise in the middle. And then... Uh, Oops, and then on stream. Uh, and, then and then the end of the text segment's there. Uh, so I said, oh, well, that's the end of the stream. And then I put in some more PDF stuff because there's a bit of space before the next pa uh, page, and this is the data segment. And so I said, oh, yeah, the data segment, that's another stream too. And then, uh, and then down at the end, um, and then say, oh, okay, that's, that's it for that stream. That's, that's the end of the resource segment. Uh, and then there's the rest of the PDF. And then uh, this is a zip file, and that's the beginning of the zip file there. Because, uh, um, EXE, uh, Windows looks at the beginning of the file to figure out if a file's an EXE. Zip looks at the end of the file to figure out if a file's a zip. And then PDF looks somewhere in the middle, kind of near the beginning. And uh, so, and the, the thing is that um, in, the, in the zip file is basically, the, the central directory structure is basically just a, a thing that says, uh, you know, file name, you know, ty size, CRC, whatever, and offset to the entry in the file. And normally it starts at zero, but if you, if you take your zip file and you, you stick like a couple kilobytes of data in front of it, uh, you can pretty much just add the delta between that and zero to the, uh, the two offsets in the, in the zip headers, and then, and then unzip sees it perfectly fine. Um, you can put all kinds of data in the middle of the zip th that way. Uh, anyway, so but there's the uh, cross-reference table. It's in the comment on, the, on it. So the, the end, of f end of file tag really does appear at the end of the file this time. All that's unnecessary, but. Um, so if you uh, unzip this, uh, see no error is detected in the compressed data. And uh, I was actually there's a um, I believe it's possible since since uh, since PDF uses the deflate algorithm, which is the same thing that Zip uses, and Zip entries have a comment at the end of the entry just before the compressed data. Uh, and you can put whatever you want after the compressed data in a zip file. I'm pretty certain it should be possible to write a PDF file in which all of the compressed objects in the PDF are also compressed objects in a zip file. So when you unzip the zip file, you extract all of the objects from the, from the PDF because all you need to do is put uh, like begin stream uh, in the zip file comment for each of the zip files and uh, then an end stream at the end, which zip will ignore and then uh, you know, bump up the appropriate offset for the next zip header. And that should work. I was going to write one of those last night, but I, I didn't quite have time. So uh, if you, uh, so anyway, that's, so this is the file. Uh, it's a zip file, and once I figure out where my mouse pointer is, uh, so I dropped it on, onto uh, here, this Windows box, and you see it's, oops, there it is. It's, uh, it's the Windows Calculate program, because that's what I started off with. And so you run it, and it still works perfectly fine as an EXE. <laughs> and then if you uh, open it up in, in Acrobat, uh, it, it opens it as a PDF and runs a JavaScript inside. <laughs> And I also believe it uh, should be possible to also put a, a stuff a RAR file in the middle of that too, because RAR doesn't care where it starts either. <coughs> but uh, I know one of the the, uh, the things on my to-do list. Uh, oh, and also as far as quines go, uh, I believe a PDF quine would look something like this. But I haven't. Uh, this doesn't work. Uh, I was working on it just before I got up on stage. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if I muck with this for like a few more minutes, I can probably get it to work. But, but basically, it, uh, you know, it's an object, and it says, oh, the rest, the, everything down to there is, you know, an object. And, and this, you know, takes the contents of that object, prints them back out with, with PDF before and after in mainstream. And I think those are an option. I can probably co co chop those off. But anyway, so uh, back to my slides. And uh, all right, is there any questions so far? You. 
Yeah, use the microphone. If you're going, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, ask questions, please uh, use the uh, microphones um, that uh, are available. Yes. It's very interesting to see what Acrobat does, but have you tested other readers as uh, KPDF or no. EPDF? Okay. Uh, the question is, have I tested all readers? And no, uh, actually, I've only looked at Acrobat for the most part. And a little bit at, at uh, OS X Preview, but just because it's, I'm um, testing this on the Mac. Uh, oh, and, and you had a question. Or no, you don't. OK. So uh, I did a couple of tests a few months ago. Um, and before I start, does, can anybody guess what conclusion I'm about to draw from all this. <laughs> so I took a, uh, whoops. Uh, so I took a, took a two-year-old exploit out of Metasploit, um, cleaned it up so it wasn't even obfuscated. And, uh, and everyone should detect this. It's, it's like ancient and, and easy to see and stuff like that. Uh, I uploaded a bunch of, uh, I uploaded to, to VirusTotal, and uh, VirusTotal, blah, 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 it's, it's, a lot of people, AV companies complain because it's not doing like the memory runtime analysis, it's only doing static analysis and blah, 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 and it doesn't really matter in this case because it's PDF. So um, anyway, this is, this is the, uh, the code I stuck into, the, uh, into a regular PDF. Um, it, uh, when you, uh, I, back in May, I uploaded it, and only nine out of 41 uh, uh, antivirus programs detected anything, and most of them were generic uh, signatures. You can see it's the heuristic stuff, gen, 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 gen. Uh, I, this morning, I uploaded the file again, and, and it, now it does like eight, what was it, 18 out of 43, and I didn't, I ran out of space here, but there's a few more after this. And so it's gotten a bit better. Um, like I said, uh, I took out the, uh, the percent sign hex stuff because most of the time that's probably what they're looking for. And, and when you do that, actually, the, uh, oh, and the, uh, this, this example doesn't work, obviously. Uh, if you do that, it drops down to two, uh, or at least it did back in May. It's, uh, uh, it is now about 14 out of 43 that will detect it as of this morning. Uh, and I, I didn't cut and paste the whole thing on here, too. It's, it's, nobody's going to read that. It's tedious. I'll just go look it up if you like, care. Um, so I, I stripped down everything except uh, down to just the uh, actual um, statement that triggers the, the vulnerability itself. Uh, nobody detected it back in May. And, uh, but today, as of this morning, uh, AVG apparently will detect it as exploit C or something. I don't know, it might just because, be because they saw my talk a few months ago. Um, I've, been, I've been passing these samples around to various researchers, so, uh, so I'm not surprised. Uh, was anybody surprised? Yeah, that's what I thought. And uh, most, yeah, but generally most of the, the actual in the wild live exploits I see are uh, generally detected by almost nothing these days. Although I, my company will detect all this stuff. And uh, ask me later if you want info on that. Because um, we, we use Adobe Acrobat for parsing PDF files. So, um, what was this? Oh, so I did the zip file trip, trick. And uh, just storing it, uh, you, you end up getting about the same results as before. Uh, if, you, uh, if you do this thing, I mean, this is what it was back in May. If you do it now, it's the other 18, like the other one, too. Uh, if you do the, the um, file name trick, uh, so, the, so the PDF header disappears when you unzip the zip file, because the antivirus program says, oh, this is a zip file, I'll unzip it and scan the contents. Oh, but this isn't, what is this file type? It doesn't have a PDF header at the beginning, so it's not a PDF. And, uh, and so it, it, that drops it down to about five, or at least back in May. It's, uh, whoops, it's, what was it? It was like 10 now, as of this morning. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't bother writing that on the list here either. Um, if you do the, uh, oh, sorry, if you do this trick, oh, and if you do that, the trick where the PDF disappears, and also you compress the, uh, the JavaScript, then uh, it drops down to two, but, uh, or at least back in May. But something to keep in mind, though, is, is if you go and look up this Google for this signature, you see a lot of people complaining uh, that it detects, like, Google Mail as being malicious. It's kind of a, it's their, their heuristic thing that, that kind of false positives on everything. Um, I don't know much about the Celsius one. Anyway, 
Uh, today it's like six. So, uh, whoops. Uh, so, uh, so I only spent like an hour or two on this. And uh, if anyone else wants to actually do this experiment like more formally, go ahead. Uh, I just need another kind of another section of the slides because everyone asks me about this. Um, I, I, don't, I actually don't know what else to add about the uh, about antivirus programs. Um, anyway, so I have a, a uh, kind of a to-do list of things to work on someday, because uh, I believe it's possible to do, uh, do heap spray using the graphics operators uh, to basically paint the heap, uh, you know, paint your shellcode into memory however you, however you want it to appear. Although there's actually a much easier way if you just uh, generate your, your, your heap as you want it and then compress it. Uh, you know, with Zlib because it's very redundant, so it compresses very small, and then when, when Acrobat goes and uncompresses it into heap memory, ta-da. Um, but it, this, is a, this is a much much more sophisticated uh, kind of show-off kind of hack. Um, there's, uh, yeah, PDF Quine, I already got that done. Uh, there's a, an amazing number of graphics operators that, are, that you have available, like, uh, like tensor cross-product triangle meshes and so on. Um, I believe it's possible you can uh, you could obfuscate data by by taking the data you want to hide, like XORing it or doing some kind of alpha channel blending or whatever with white noise, and then basically taking the output of that, um, the, the 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 white noise and the the output of that, sticking them in the PDF and then having the PDF recombine them back together again graphically, and you get the original data back out. I believe it should be possible to do that as well, but I, I haven't actually tested this. Um, Let's see, what else? Oh, uh, actually, there was this guy down in Argentina who did actually uh, do a heap spray using inline images. Uh, but I haven't had time to like, really uh, look at it closely. Um, anyway, since there's, uh, there's um, a bunch of ways of doing alternative data streams and stuff like that in, the, uh, in PDFs, so you can have a PDF file that is, uh, has different text on the page for each language, uh, depending on the locale of the computer you open it on. Uh, there's also some, even without using JavaScript, it should be, it's, it's possible to do that. And I think even the other stuff you can do with that JavaScript, but basically all of these are quite, you know, all available from the JavaScript at least. So you could, uh, t you know, make a PDF file never look the same on any two systems. Uh, I haven't, I haven't tested that yet either, but. Um, somebody said we should, uh, should we also write database scanner. And since a lot of printers these days have PDF engines in, in them as well. Uh, if the, uh, depending on how full featured the, the PDF engine in your printer is, it may be possible to like scan your databases from your printer when you go to print a document. I'd be really surprised if that would actually happen, but uh, maybe not. Uh, TrueType fonts also have a uh, kind of a little, little programming language in them as well, but I haven't quite figured anything useful to do with them as far as uh, attack kind of things go. Um, stuff, a lot of stuff. There's a, actually, you can actually, there's a stripped down postscript that you can, that still exists in there as well. It's mostly, mostly as far as I can tell, only used for dot screen functions and only when you go to print the thing on a printer. And so I haven't really spent a lot of time experimenting with it because I, I wanted to write a, a, a Mandelbrot generator in, uh, in, the, in the postscript interpreter in the PDF, but whatever. So in conclusion, um, <laughs> Um, okay, any more questions? Can you put your... Uh, Hands up uh, if you want to ask questions, please, and uh, let the audio angels know. So uh, have you thought what implications would it made if you not only tried printers, but mobile phones? You know, some of them can read PDF documents. Yep. Uh, there was actually, um, uh, uh, like in August, actually, there was, uh, there was at least one or two PDF engine O-days in the PDF engine on the iPhone. Uh, the the jailbreakme.com uh, thing was basically using a, uh, a an O-day in the PDF reader to uh, essentially jailbreak your phone. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Next question. Uh, there is a PDF slash A format, which is used yes. for long time archiving um, data, 80 years or something like this. Right. Uh, this is, should be a subset which should be stable. It but should be. Did you look into it? I, no, actually. I, it's, it's, I should have added it as my to-do list. I, yeah, it's basically PDF slash A is the archival PDF. That's, uh, it's basically the 1.7 spec stripped down, so it's not like a JavaScript interpreter in it. And it's supposed to be you know, deterministically rendered, so it does appear the same way to everyone. But I, don't, I haven't actually really spent any time looking at it. Because as a side remark, this is the intended format. If you look into this infamous Ausweis app in Germany, mm -hmm. this is a format uh, where the documents should be signed in, which are presented to the user right. before he signs it with this uh, German new Personalausweis. So uh, right. this should be worth a try. Yeah. OK, we'll take a question from uh, IRC. Next. Okay, first of all, the chat is um, ask um, yourself if it's um, well good to open your PDF slides or if there's <laughs> anything in there. And there was a question about um, the page counts in the PDF files. What Ooh. happens if you make them really large? Could you try Actually, I don't, as far as the really large count, I don't actually know. Although I do know that I did notice um, when I was experimenting with building a uh, page tree uh, that um, that OS X Preview and Adobe Acrobat uh, look at different things to figure out what order the page is in. And so I ended up writing a PDF file where the page is rendered in one order, like one, two, three, four, five in Acrobat, and rendered in page, uh, reverse order, five, four, three, two, one in OS X Preview. It's the same file. Uh, I didn't put the stuff up here, but it's, uh, I think it's like one looks at the explicit name of the page and the other one looks at the order in which they appear in the array. But uh, uh, see, first part of the question was, what did you just ask? <laughs> Wait. Um, well, the page count question you just answered, and the other question was if it's safe to open your slides. Safe to open. So I've, all of my slides I've been putting up lately, I've actually been sticking a little comment in it, saying that you know, if you read this comment, that, uh, I know, whatever it was. I, I didn't have to actually put anything clever in there, but I, I, I did put a little comment in just for the people who would look. Uh, another question, have you experimented with uh, signed documents uh, and subverting uh, the signature I, or I something? Uh, signed documents signed in documents. Acrobat. Uh, so the question is, have I, have I tried subverting signed documents yet? And I haven't tried that yet. Uh, I know that uh, there is some, for, if a document's signed, there's a, I think there were some extra restrictions that kick in on the JavaScript or some of the objects, but I'm not 100% certain about that. It's another thing to look into. The, 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 the just, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in, in the PDF f format. The, uh, the, just the ISO docs for the PDF syntax itself, the JavaScript uh, documentation, and the XML forms comes with like 2,500 pages of text. Jesus. And it's not even entirely documented. I've found stuff that's not in any of those. Right. OK, other questions? Put your hands up. That gentleman there. What about the uh, same origin policy uh, when it comes to uh, XML communication and uh, the SOAP uh, part? Uh, of currently, I believe it does do same origin. How does that work when it comes to uh, PDFs loaded on? I mean, when it's not in the browser? Um, I'm not 100% certain. I, I've only spent a little bit of time experimenting with the forms, and I, I, do have a, I, I do actually have a PDF file that will go and connect to some website, but it originally came from that website, but I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if Acrobat's keeping track of that or if, if I went and I changed the URL, if it'd go somewhere else. So I, there's, I'm a little bit fuzzy on that part. It's, it's, it's in, like, chapter... 14 of, you know, subsection, whatever, in the ISO spec. Um, the hybrid file you had, the uh, one with the calculator, the hybrid right. file you had, the uh, one with the calculator and the zip file and the PDF file, have you tried to edit it with uh, the Adobe? I don't, have it. I don't know how it's called, the Adobe tool to edit PDFs. Does this editing of the PDF file break the exe file or the zip file? Um, so the question is if I edited the, 
the hybridized exe PDF file? Would it break the exe part? And I haven't actually tried it with Adobe's tools, but uh, I know when I've written PDF files uh, before and then modified them in the OS X preview program and then saved them back out, it, it completely rewrote the file because it, uh, like even the graphics operators, because uh, I had like nice neat like graphics code and then it turned into this big mess of, uh, basically it, it, I'm suspecting that, that uh, Quartz is basically just don't serializing the, the graphics objects it has in memory and, into the PDF. But okay, we have time for maybe another two questions. So if Hello, you yes. Um, I have a question what you imagine the solution that, to this could be. So personally I could think of some uh, PDF parser which only reads documents with a Titan spec or do you know what they imagine the solution to be to this or what do you uh, think of? So Adobe's solution as far as um, the huge vulnerable vulnerability surface in Acrobat is to sandbox uh, Acrobat, the program itself. Uh, they started with version 10, it's still got a bunch of, it's not a complete sandboxing yet. Um, and uh, as far as other things, um, some people have suggested uh, writing a PDF scrubber, and I think that might work. Um, it's it's a slightly less work than actually writing a full-blown PDF rendering engine because you don't have to, to really deal with the graphics. You just have to check for syntactic conformity. For the thing is that the, the, the um, you know the spec doesn't actually say what is a conforming PDF. So you, you when you write the scrubber, you get to decide. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty much aside from a scrubber, there's my company's product, but I, I'm not actually, I'm trying not to make this a commercial pitch. Um, ask me later if you want to know. Or you can ask me now if you want. But I, I'm a, I won't do it unless someone asks. Okay, we have, to, okay. We have time for one Any more question, if there's uh, anything else. Anyone? Going once, going twice, going three times. Well, thank you very much, Julia. Okay.